Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be checking out what's new with POP2110, then we'll review some of the recently added features and talk about some of the future features coming to POP. So as far as new features go, if we go down to the Show Applications button on the newer dock from last version, we have a redesigned applications experience. This used to take up the entire screen. As much of you who use GNOME are accustomed to, this is a newly redesigned application space for POP and differs from what you would see in GNOME 40 or 41. So what's nice about this is they've put some folders at the bottom for you, including Office. So the standard Office suite here, which is LibreOffice, is included in this subfolder. We got a system subfolder for some information about the system as far as editing settings. And then you have utilities, which includes quite a few things here. Then finally, the library home where we started. So what's good about this? Well, one thing that they've made is, of course, it takes up less real estate. So if you had something going on in the background, let's say I had this file browser launched, you can now see the applications behind it launched. If I click on anything in the background, the application screen goes away. What else is neat is you can create as many folders as you want. And if you create enough folders, let's just go and keep adding them until we have enough to go down. It actually subdivides the section into another row and you can keep adding folders. So how do you get stuff into these folders? Well, there's really one main way. Let me exit out of the background here. We'll go back and you can actually transport things between the home and other folders. Notice how things are disappearing now as I move them between the folders and now they're located in these folders. You can of course change the name of a folder up in the right top. So I'm gonna call this the settings folder, this the uh, terminal folder. Of course is a little goofy right now, but just to kind of get a feeling for how that works. If we want to delete something, you hit the delete key. And it says deleting this folder will move the application icons to the library home. So it goes right back to library home if you delete the folder. That way you don't lose your application. Now one interesting thing is I can't actually move this atop of different icons and applications to create stacks anymore. That used to be an option in GNOME. So they've changed this up a little bit as well. I don't know if I like that. Also, you can't really move things around and lay them out the way you like. Maybe you like launching some applications more than others. I guess that's what favorites is for down on the dock, but it is something that I enjoyed using with some of the other GNOME versions. Short of that, you can use arrow keys to get around, including the tab key, which tabs through the individual apps, and the arrow key, of course, goes up, down, and side to side. If you use the updated search up top, this also searches applications on your system as well as suggests applications. So let's start typing in something like Spotify. I don't currently have it installed, but look at that, available to install. I can select Spotify. That will launch the pop shop here in a moment and we will be able to install Spotify from there. One little annoying thing that I found is for some reason it's not launching the actual installation for Spotify. I'll try that again, maybe with the pop shop opened. I'm gonna hit Spotify and here we go. That time it did open up. So not sure if I messed something up there, but maybe it's a bug actually, where you have to have the pop shop opened up in order to actually be able to install Spotify. Either way, we're gonna go back and just check out that search feature again. If I do three plus three, does it give me anything? No, but you can still get that from the launcher. If you wanna do some math in here, or even square roots, logs, what have you, it does release that. One of my favorite things about Pop is that they introduced this launcher a few versions ago now, but still one of my favorite things. The launcher, of course, is great for more stuff here. And if you put a question mark, you get information about ways of actually searching and running commands or applications using the launcher. The other thing I believe they've added was in the file manager, I think they auto fill now if you search for things. So let's see here. I'll just type something for the file browser. So like desktop. So it looks like it's trying to auto fill things down below. Um, I'm not sure if this was in GNOME before, but seems like that's one of the new things that they've added in. They also have a better multi-monitor experience. The application library launches an application on whichever screen you have the mouse focused on. 
that's always nice. One of my biggest gripes about Windows 11 is that it does not really do that well. So uh, love to see that. They've also announced a Pop Pi tech preview for the Raspberry Pi 4. So make sure to check that out if you like messing with the Rasp Pi. We'll check out some of the system information soon, as well as resource usage with this desktop environment. One last improvement is up in the Wi-Fi or wired connection settings. If you have Wi-Fi, the connections will now be sorted by things like your current connection, previous connections, and strength of signal. Smash that like button because now we're gonna talk about the overall desktop experience here in Pop! OS. Let's review it real quick. Top left, we have workspaces. Select between various different virtual workspaces that you can be working in between with different applications running on any of the workspaces. So let's just launch two here. Now I see that I have a third workspace and I can actually move things around as necessary here or combine them into one which that automatically closes things out for me. Applications here launches the new view that we've already talked about, so we won't go into this too much. In the center here, like you would expect in GNOME, your notifications as well as the calendar. On the right-hand side, we have the wonderful tiling window support that we can toggle on and off. And I've talked about this a few times. Check out some of my other reviews if you wanna get in depth with how to use this. Nothing new here, but a great feature to check out if you want window tiling support turned on. On the right-hand side, we have volume control, our wired or wireless connection, settings, lock, and restarting or powering off the computer. On the bottom is probably one of the most notable things from the previous version that got added in, which is a dock that got moved to the bottom. You can spend some time and rearrange things and or make the dock smaller or centered in the screen to make it look even better in my opinion. There's plenty of settings you can now mess with if you just go to settings and go under the desktop tab. There's general, background, appearance, dock, and workspaces. Dock's the one I usually go to and go through and change the size if you want or if you wanna get rid of the edges, which I think actually makes for a cleaner screen. Make sure to check out these settings if you're new to Pop. For others, it's just the review. We've kind of gone through these, but let's check out the show launcher I've already showed. Show workspaces we already looked at. Show applications, done that. We got the default web browser, which is Firefox. The file browser, a terminal, Pop Shop, which if we launch, we've kind of seen this already. And finally, the settings. We won't be getting into this much more, but let's talk about the future of POP just before we check out that system resource usage and system information. One exciting feature coming to us hopefully next year is a new desktop environment, which I can only imagine is going to look very similar to this, but POP is trying to get away from GNOME and make their own desktop environment that that's going to be built with Rust. This has been confirmed by a desktop designer at System76 for Pop! OS. So hopefully they've been working on that. Quite excited to see that. One other thing is I'm surprised we didn't get an update to GNOME 41 because there was a few little changes there between 40 and 41. Some applications got updated. Things look a little better here and there. But I guess they decided maybe not to put their focus on that, especially since they've been tweaking GNOME so much they didn't upgrade to GNOME 41. So now we'll launch that terminal and check out information about the system as well as resource usage. So if I launch HTOP, we have about 1.5% of the CPU being used. Memory is at 1.21 gigs, which is medium tier here. That's a little much. At the moment, sure, I've been interacting with the system for a little bit now, but I wouldn't expect it to be quite that high. Not a big deal for most modern computers, but some of us will have an issue with that much memory being hogged. Anyways, 101 tasks, 226 threads, and the uptime has been 27 minutes. I'm going to reboot real quick, and we'll check this out once more for a fresh start. All right, back in HTOP. I've only been up for about 50 seconds. Now we see 837 megabytes. This is more of what I expected. Those are on the lines of GNOME 40 or 41, much better. Let's now talk about the system information. Using NeoFetch, 
This is Pop OS 21.10, the 64-bit version. I'm emulating this with kernel 5.15, and there's 1,746 source packages on here, bash 5.1 being used. The desktop environment here is GNOME 40.5, with of course a lot of Pop OS tweaks on top of that. The window theme, Pop, and by default they're using Pop Dark. Terminal is the GNOME terminal, and I am emulating this on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series processor with 835 megabytes out of the 8 gigs available on the system currently being used. Well, gotta say, overall, I'm pretty happy with what they've done with the applications view. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.